Thanks. Well, I didn't want to keep you in suspense regarding my views, so I put it in the title so that it will be uh, clear. Um, w I, I'm talking here actually about the, the about the uh, what I'm going to present is actually the work of a committee that was formed in order to review the retirement age for women. Uh, there was actually a committee some years back that recommended that the retirement age be raised for men and women to 67. That was, I think, maybe eight years ago or something like that. As a result of that old committee, the Netanyahu committee, the, age, uh, the retirement age for men was raised to 67. Uh, the committee also recommended to raise the retirement age for women uh, to 67, but that recommendation was not uh, uh, accepted by the Knesset, which decided that there would be another committee formed some years later, which was the committee that I was on. And actually it was worded in a way that sort of the default was that the age, uh, uh, retirement age will be uh, raised to 64, but it will be reviewed. Uh, our uh, committee also recommended that the age will be raised to 67, but uh, it was brought to a vote in the Knesset, and the result was 77 to 1. So 77 members were against raising the, uh, the uh, retirement age, actually raising it in two, uh, 2016, if there, another committee will not decide something else. Uh, but right now it remains uh, 62. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is first just give you some numbers in, of international comparisons of uh, retirement age. Uh, then talk a little bit about what the retirement age does to the replacement ratio. Then discuss a study which was conducted actually by, by uh, Tamar and Natalia who are sitting here and they're from the uh, research department of the Bank of Israel that looked at what exactly were the results of the uh, raising the retirement age from 60 to 62, which was the result of the previous committee, what was the effect on labor force participation, and uh, some other considerations uh, regarding the labor market results of a possible raising of the retirement age. Now, when we talk about retirement age, and actually Lilach mentioned it earlier, what was meant here is the retirement age, which, uh, uh, which gives the eligibility for Social Security old age allowances and for pension from the uh, old pension funds. This is what we mean by raising the retirement age. So what is the current comparison of the retirement age uh, of women? Uh, if we look at the OECD countries, you can see that Israel is uh, at 62. Uh, most, uh, most countries, the largest number of countries are at 65. Uh, actually, you see two colors of the bars. The ones that have two colors mean that the current retirement age is the green part, but the decisions have already been taken to gradually increase the retirement age to the end of the other part of the bar. So uh, if we take also the future uh, retirement age, uh, there will be a vast majority at 65, a few above 65, and very few under uh, 65. This is for their they might have also some other type of pension funds that we have, and it may apply also to that, but I, I don't know. Just one other definition. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., the earliest age is 62. That's the earliest age you can start receiving benefits. But there's a steep increase if you postpone it. Mm -hmm. Is that true for most of these countries? Is it true for Israel? I, uh, for example, 
for Israel, you can retire from the public sector at 60, uh, and, but with a lower pension, and you have to retire at 70. Actually, it's going up to 70. It's 67. No, it's 70? Okay. 67, but I think there is a decision to increase. To 70. Yeah, the age of 70, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called. Yeah, it's a small increase. Yeah. Five percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll go on. Uh, Yeah, that's what I said in the beginning. I def the definition here is your eligibility for Social Security old age allowance and your eligibility to get pension from the old pension funds. Okay? Uh, and there is, I mean... The old defined benefits. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Um, the next comparison is just... Uh, which countries have different age, uh, retirement age for men and women? And again, the vast majority have the same equal age for men and women, uh, Israel being one of the few that has a difference. Um, and that's true for 2050. So if we take already all the legislated uh, plan for increase re increasing retirement age, there will be only three countries, Switzerland, Poland, and Turkey, uh, in addition to Israel, that will have a difference in the age, uh, in the retirement age between men and women. And with, um, the, again, most of the countries having it at 65, a number of them at 67, and countries like uh, Greece, for example, will have it at the low. Uh, still lower age. No, it's only OECD countries. So, uh, okay. So, why raising retirement age? Nothing new here, but uh, as you know, uh, the life expectancy at 65 has gone up. It's uh, now 86 for women, 83 for men. Uh, it has gone up by 30 years, uh, by, yeah, by, sorry, by five years over the last uh, 30 years. And at least for women, the retirement age was only raised by uh, two years. That's uh, just, uh, uh, that was my comment earlier on. And if we look at how long will Israeli women are expected to live after their retirement compared to the number of years after retirement that men will live. So women are expected on average to live 24, uh, 24 years after their retirement, where men are expected to live 16 years after retirement. I must say that when I made this very simple calculation, I, I did it three times. I'm, I was sure that I'm making an arithmetic uh, mistake because it seemed so uh, such an outrageous difference, but these are the numbers. It is unfair. Um, okay. It's not only that our retirement age is relatively uh, early for women, but also the life expectancy in Israel is relatively high. And in Israel, for Israeli women, it's relatively high. So when you look at the, at the other countries that have a later retirement age, it sort of underestimates uh, the, the relative problem. Okay, so what will the retirement age, uh, changing the retirement age, do to our uh, replacement ratios? 
Uh, so here it's uh, again a calculation that was done by Tamar and uh, Natalia, right? I think. Uh, and uh, they looked at the, ef at the uh, effect of or the, what would be the replacement ratio at various retirement ages and not surprisingly uh, raising the retirement age from 62 to 67 if we look at low levels of schooling or low level of uh, wages uh, will raise the re replacement ratio from 77 to 92 percent and basically at all levels of uh, at all levels of education or at all wage levels you get a substantial increase in the replacement ratio as a result of raising the Sorry wage yeah my, uh, replacement ratio it's the it's the ratio between your wages between your income post-retirement, your pension and uh, social security, to what it was on the eve of your retirement. It's replacing your income, your labor income. Okay? But, this, but it, it's not just your social security income here. No, it's your, it's your pension. pension. It includes, yeah. Security. Yeah. for people who are in the defined contribution system, in the current system. The old, the old pension scheme to which you will be eligible on your retirement age is a defined contribution system. By the way, these, pe these pension funds are already closed. New retirees, okay, so it, it is discussed, it is presenting the replacement ratio for people that will be affected by this uh, raising of the retirement age. Looks incredibly high. You must be assuming very high rates of retirement. Right. And, 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 what, and what rate of return do you assume they are earning on their investment? Well, actually, this is, uh, it's not an unknown because these pensions get a special uh, uh, bonds that are issued to them with a, a subsidized interest rate. Well, that's, so that's it's, I think, 5.25 five, 5 or something like that. Excuse me? 4.86. Okay, five, almost 5%. Five so 4.86. Zach. Um, may you adopt 4.86. There are subsidized uh, uh, interest rates that. But I thought the whole idea was that that would be guaranteed only for a couple of years, and then then you'd be in the capital market. No, no, no. That's not true for the old pension funds. I'm talking about the old pension funds. People no longer. No. I, I, got, I got different numbers. Wait, my story is quite different. I looked at the numbers, and uh, we have simulators that uh, are doing these calculations. And uh, I would like to see their calculations because we get we get much lower numbers. It depends on whether it is after tax, before tax. You tech. included Social Security in these replacements? You included Social Security. And it, 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 Depending whether there is a, it's before tax, after tax, uh, the rate of return, how many months they work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I, I would, can give you all I the would, assumptions, I by the way. But like, I would definitely like to see the okay. calculations. Yeah, it's after taxes. It assumes that uh, women enter the labor market, work full time from the age of 25. Uh, and they have their wage profile is according to the wage profile that is estimated in in uh, wage equations, and that uh, they have the uh, their age at uh, the age sorry their wage at the age of 58 e equals their um, the median age of women at the at, at 
this age, at this age group. So, but anyway, we can look at the calculations. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's after tax. Yeah, it's after tax. Well, and I'm just, I just think it's a critical assumption in these calculations is the rate of return on assets. Sure. And if you assume a 4 or a 5% real rate of return, I don't think that's sustainable. They assume what the, the government uh, is telling them to assume that is something like 4% or 4.25%. Okay. Uh, the next issue is in a, is what will be or what can we learn from the experience of raising the age retirement age from 60 to 62 for women and from 65 to 67 from men, which was actually the law that took uh, effect in 2004. And we can see what happened to the participation rate of the affected groups, the groups that were exactly at the age that were affected by raising the retirement age, and try to learn from that on what we could expect for if we further increase the uh, retirement age. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the work was done by uh, Tamara Mot uh, Nisaka and uh, Natalia, who is here, who are here. Uh, okay. And the, uh, what we looked, or what they looked, was at the rate of participation in the labor market for men and women at different levels of education. So here we're looking at the low schooling level, which is a, a zero to 10 or 12 years of schooling. Okay. And uh, what you can see and what is marked uh, in the red circle is the group where, which was directly affected by the law. And the law was uh, started in 2004 and you can see the before and after rates of participation for the affected group. And what is very, very clear here is for, that for women, uh, if you look at the uh, rates of participation, they shot up from around 23, 24 to 40% for this particular group. And for men, also you can see that this is the group that had the most pronounced increase uh, in rates of participation. The same is true also if we look at the medium uh, uh, schooling uh, level, so the medium wage level. Again, you can see the most pronounced increase in the rates of participation. They have higher rates of participation, but also here it, uh, they grew from 40-something to almost 60% for women and from somewhere around uh, maybe 25% to around 60% for men, and the same is true also for the high schooling uh, group. What I think uh, is very clear from here, and, and actually this is maybe the most uh, controversial part that was uh, uh, during the discussion about raising retirement age. The claim was women also today can retire later. So why should it, if those who want to work can retire later, uh, it's the, the mandatory retirement age is only at 67. So why should it have an effect? So first of all, it has an effect and that has been studied. What uh, apparently happens is that it affects also the norm because it, we don't see a, a substantial uh, increase in the unemployment of older women as a result. If the problem would be that we raise retirement age and as a result there is a, a larger uh, women, larger number of women that are actually laid off because the employers want to get rid of older women, which was the claim, then we would see either a substantial increase in the unemployment rate or we would see people actually leaving the labor market. We would see uh, discouraged women leaving the labor market. We have not seen that. So we have not seen an increase in unemployment. We have not seen 
seen a surge in the discouragement, discouraged women who leave the labor market, which basically suggests that they want to stay in the labor market. And also, when the norm changes, the employers also hold on to these women. They don't uh, sort of uh, kick them out before the uh, official retirement age. So um, another claim that uh, actually sometimes is brought up uh, in the discussion is that uh, if we leave older people longer in the uh, labor market, they will actually not, uh, not make room for younger people to actually join the labor market. So what we can see here is what happened, actually it's the rate of change in employment in OECD countries over the decades starting in 1992, what happened to the older person's uh, employment and what happened to the young uh, under 25 uh, uh, employment. And generally what we can see is that there is a positive relationship. I don't want to claim causality. I don't want to claim that all, uh, the fact that uh, there are more older uh, people in the labor market actually brings in uh, younger people into the labor market, although one could uh, make a macroeconomic uh, 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 argument for that, that larger demand, uh, higher, uh, the fact that there is, that uh, as a result of larger participation in the labor force of people with higher income, maybe there is overall more demand. Maybe this is too much to, to claim, but I think that at least this should convince you that there isn't the opposite relationship, that it's not that countries that have more older people in the labor market, either because of uh, their choice or because of retirement age, it's certainly, you can't, there is, uh, it would be hard to claim that this uh, displaces or doesn't allow the rise in employment for uh, younger people. Uh, and the other, the last uh, picture, and actually it's the uh, reciprocal of what was shown already in the morning, is what is demo what is the demographics, or what are the demographic prospects in Israel? And what you have here, it's not the uh, dependency ratio; it's the opposite of the dependency ratio. And the numbers that are written uh, on the line basically say how many working age people will be in Israel for every person over 65. And I have to say that this picture is striking. Somebody said, I think early in, uh, earlier in the morning, that our demographic problem is not yet here. I think it's here. And it's uh, very, it's gonna actually, I would say it, it's going to be inflated very, very quickly. Starting actually in these years, there is a very sharp drop in the number of younger people or working age people to every person over 65. And uh, I think it's important to bear in mind this picture when we think on the uh, macroeconomic uh, 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 um, ramifications of not changing the uh, retirement age. I think in the public discussion in Israel, uh, uh, the issue of what will happen to the actuarian uh, um, balance of the social security was somebody else's problem. Uh, the, especially that, that view was, I think, represented by some of the women, uh, women rights so, uh, group that uh, sort of thought that the, act the issue of the actuarian uh, balance is somebody else's problem. We should look only at from the point of, the, of view of uh, women who will have to uh, uh, work longer. I think that looking at this picture and analyzing uh, the projected uh, accounts of the social security should make it very clear that if we don't raise the retirement age, the pensions of everybody will have to be adjusted uh, sooner rather than later. 
Now, I think that we shouldn't ignore some uh, problems in the labor market for uh, women that would have to stay longer in the labor market and that are in some specific uh, occupations uh, where uh, the ability to actually uh, work in at uh, a higher age uh, could be a problem. I think it's sort of localized problems. It's not general, but I think we shouldn't ignore that. And I think there are some complementary uh, policy uh, measures that could be uh, adopted together with the decision about raising the retirement age. Uh, for example, we have a very stingy unemployment uh, uh, scheme, unemployment insurance scheme. And it's stingy in general, but I think that it should, if we raise the uh, retirement aid, I, th I think as a complementary measure, we should extend the period of eligibility of, uh, uh, of people at the higher age so as to sort of deal with the localized problems of uh, women that might be displaced as a result uh, of raising retirement age. Uh, I think there are some other measures such as uh, enforcement of laws against discrimination. Uh, maybe there could be some incentives for employers to actually extend the employment uh, uh, period of elderly workers. And I think more should, uh, will have to be done in retraining in, for particular uh, groups of women that might, be, might hurt as a result of raising the retirement age. So just to sum up, I think the case for raising the retirement age is, uh, at least in my mind, very clear. It wasn't clear to the 77 uh, members of the Knesset that voted against it. Uh, I think there is a, 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 the raising of retirement age will increase substantially the repla replacement ratio. Uh, there is no evidence that it will raise unemployment. Uh, there is clear evidence that it will increase actually employment and participation of older uh, women. There is a need for some additional policy tools. Uh, and I think that uh, there is a clear, uh, uh, the problem is very clear and if we don't deal with it now, the, it will affect the ability of actually paying um, the old age pension in some years and we should uh, not think that it's somebody else's problem. So I'll stop here.